Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Farah and in today's video we're going to talk about a code injection vulnerability. Before we get into this video, let me tell you about today's sponsors, Sneak. Sneak is a tool which is used for finding and fixing vulnerabilities in your code, open source dependencies and containers. It's a completely free tool so you can use my link below to sign up on Sneak and start scanning your GitHub repositories, open source dependencies, Docker containers and a lot more. And if you're interested in knowing about the code injection vulnerability, then please continue watching. For demonstration of this bug, we're going to use Sneak's vulnerable app called Goof. You can find the repository for this app on GitHub and I will also be linking it below in case you want to check it out. As you can see, they have a code injection vulnerability on their app and that's what we're going to try and exploit today. I've already set the lab up on my system, so now let's go to the app. So as you can see, we have our lab right here and we have an account details form. The first step while looking for injection bugs is to look for a place where the application is accepting user input and here we have this form. So let's see what this form does when we enter valid input. So as you can see, after submitting the form, the name of the user is displayed, which means that the application is accepting user input and reflecting it back in the response. So the next step would be to try entering some XSS payloads or template injection payloads here. So let's try and see what happens. I'm going to enter a template injection payload in the first name parameter and an XSS payload in the last name parameter. And as you can see, the application has some kind of input sanitization taking place because even though the invalid characters are accepted by the application, they are not rendered. And since this is a vulnerable app, I'm not going to poke around too much with different payloads. So now that we know what this form does, let's look at the code behind this form to get a better understanding of what's going on. Okay, so this is the code for the form. And here we have the function that is responsible for saving the account details. This indicates that the function can access the save account details request and its response. The next callback allows this function to either display the data or throw an error depending on whether valid data was entered or not. Next, we can see that the values for the profile details are taken directly from the request body, which is the data entered by the user. The same data is then validated by the app. Once validation is performed, any extra spaces after the first name and last name values are trimmed. And lastly, if everything is valid, then the app renders the response using a template called account.hbs. If we look at what account.hbs is, we can see that it's the template which is used to display the user input. HBS indicates that handlebars is the template engine being used to render the data. And Handlebars is a JavaScript library which is used to create reusable web page templates. So now we're back to our lab. We already know that these input fields are being validated here, so we may not be able to make use of any payloads in these fields. But as an attacker, we can try adding another completely arbitrary field while intercepting the request through the proxy. So let's do that. So first I'm going to convert it to JSON and I'm going to add a field called layout and let me explain to you why we're adding this field here. The template engine handlebars allows you to specify which layout you want to use while displaying the data. For example, if we want to use account.hbs as the layout, we will specify it like this. Here, account.hbs can be changed to any other template file that we want to use to display the data. So now, as you might be able to guess, since this field accepts file names, we can try injecting a local file inclusion payload as its value. So here I'm going to give package.json and send and since there was no validation specified in the code for this field, the application has returned the content of this internal file to us in the response. Now of course, since this was an intentionally vulnerable app, it was pretty straightforward to exploit it here. Nonetheless, we saw how a vulnerable template engine could be exploited through an injection bug that wasn't a traditional template injection. So now that we have exploited this bug, can you tell me how you would categorize it? Would this be a template injection bug, a code injection bug or a file inclusion bug? Let me know in the comments. And now that we have exploited it successfully, let's see how we can fix this bug using Sneak. So I'm on my Sneak dashboard here and I'm going to navigate to the Projects tab. 
Here I can add a project to scan for vulnerabilities. Sneak also allows us to scan public repositories. So that's what I'm going to do. Here I'm going to write the name of the lab that we tested the bug on and we can add the repository and then import it so we can begin scanning. On this page, we are just going to wait until it finishes scanning. The same scan was done by Sneak a few hours ago. So for now, we can just look at those results. When we open the scan, we can see that Sneak has detected a bunch of vulnerabilities here of all severities and we can also use some other filters to filter through them. The bug that we are interested in is in the handlebars library. So that's what I'm going to search for. As you can see, there is a vulnerability detected here where handlebars is a template engine and it mixes pure template data with engine configuration options and by overwriting those configuration options, a file disclosure vulnerability can be triggered. This vulnerability is also documented in Sneak's vulnerability database and as you can see, there is no fixed version for this vulnerability. Sometimes there may not be any known fix and we might have to manually fix the bug. So here are two lines of code that will fix this vulnerability and will remove any profile elements that may have been added arbitrarily by the attacker. But a lot of times vulnerabilities can also be fixed automatically. When you scan your own repository and not a public one, Sneak allows you to automatically fix these vulnerabilities. So let's see how that works. Here I'm importing my own personal repository. So as you can see, this repository has just finished scanning and when we click on the results, along with the vulnerabilities, there's also a button called fix this vulnerability. So let's see what happens when we click on it. So as you can see, there are a bunch of vulnerabilities here. We can select whichever one we want to fix and when we scroll down, we can open a fix PR for it. So it's as simple as that. You click the button and you can automatically fix these vulnerabilities by opening a fixed PR for them. That's all I had for you in this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, then like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will definitely be posting more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.